What's up, soul family and my baddies? I wanted to uh, emphasize on some things. Um, I don't know why I got, just got this energy that people, um, not people in particular, but more so mothers um, and fellas who have been raised by really good mothers um, felt as if I was taking a shot when it comes down to me saying it's a gift to be a mother. No, so let me give you... Um, well, sh let me elaborate on um, what I mean by that because um, people take what I say the wrong way, um, not knowing the history of what I've been through. And um, if you know, for people who don't know me, um, God brought me through a lot of stuff, you know, and one of it was conceiving a child. So when that blessing was given to me, you know, I did everything I could. To make the sacrifices that I've made in order to um, get my son in situations that were a little bit more so of a calm environment. Okay, so um, I'm not saying that you know nobody else deserves the applause, but while I'm alive, I'm gonna give myself some flowers because I don't want to wait till I'm gone to, for my flowers to be received. Okay, I'm gonna give myself some flowers. I'm gonna pat myself on the back because if nobody else. I'm going to give myself that honor. You feel me? So, um, and it's not a shot at nobody. And I'm not trying to educate nobody on how they do things. But I also learned that it's more so eternal, um, not eternal, but internal when it comes down to um, Jabari. Come on back here, baby. Come on back here. Um, it's more so internal when it comes down to when people give themselves a pat on the back for being a mother. You feel me? So let me just go on and dive in in this particular topic. This topic is called Right Place, Wrong Time. Okay. Um, and I want to talk to um, all of my young adults, you know, um, and I want to get down to the nitty gritty on a lot of things, you know. Um, first, I'm going to start off by telling you the story of my friend. I had a friend, um, God rest her soul, she's no longer with us um, or with me. Um, she went through a lot. Um, she was adopted and um, her foster mother had um, treated her so well, treated her so good. And, um, you know, she had foster brother and stuff like that, which was um, the real biological child to the foster mother she wanted to feel loved you know um the streets for the most part raised her um she was well known by her talent and um but she just wasn't loved you know she had people that she called her family but when she would go home her foster mother you know, as she got older, start t treating her like complete shit, you know. Um, the only time that she was good to her is, um, is when she had money so they can go to the casino type stuff, you know. And But during that time, um, she was everything under the sun. She was all kind of bitches. She was all kind of hoes. She was all kind of dangling stuff. She did it um, in front of the kids. Um, she got pregnant at a young age. She got pregnant when she was a teenager. And all she wanted was to feel loved. That's all she wanted. And um, the more unloved she felt, um, the more decisions was more so a chance that she was taking, but she was doing it from a broken place. She was doing it from a broken heart. And... Um, the foster mother did a lot of things. Me and her became really, really close over time. People never understood her, but I did. Um, her mother did a lot of things behind her back. Try to get, well, she got her kids took, put her out the house. Um, they mistreated the kids. It was just like a toxic generational curse. They kept going on and on. Broke the family up. Um, just to fast forward, um, she went through a lot. She made friends and then she would lose friends because the way she loved was 
way different. She loved people the way that she was considered to be loved by the one that raised her. She wanted to meet her real family. I was with her when she did. She was so happy. She was so excited because she went on her way to meet her real family. And um, <laughs> it was so crazy because she was going to help me find my father. It was, you know, we was going to do it together. But uh, we fell out before we got that far, you know. I was there um, when she met her folks, but it wasn't the same way on the other end due to altercation. But, you know, you learn. You live and you learn. Um, I said all this um, because um, I know a lot of people are going through this. I know a lot of people have experienced this um, where you don't realize that the things that you went through was not because it was supposed to be that way. Um, it went that way because of how things happen. If, if you was at the right place, but at the wrong time. And I say this because you met everybody that you meet, it was meant for you to meet them. But you couldn't control, you couldn't pick your family. You couldn't pick who was supposed to be there in your life. You couldn't pick them, you know? And some people never had their mother in their life, you know? And some had their mother, but their mother might have treated them as if the child was jealous of the parent, which is nonsense. Treated that child, no matter how much that child showed them love, they would cope the pain with maybe you should get checked out to cover up how that child really truly felt growing up and it was only because they didn't know how to heal they didn't know how to heal they haven't forgiven themselves because at one point in time they regretted having you they felt like you stopped their life they felt like if you wasn't here, I would have been a whole lot further. God make no mistakes, y'all. I know a lot of people in their 30s felt this way, you know? Might even been some in their late 20s, you know? Early 40s. I know from, I know it's a lot of people now, today, that's experienced or have experienced that. And they just could not understand why they kept meeting these kind of people. You didn't meet these people for no reason. You didn't meet those friends for no reason. You didn't meet them for no reason. It's law of attraction. You was gonna meet them regardless because like attract like. You was, your soul called their soul. Y'all souls met on purpose. That's why you was at the right place, but that you felt like it was at the wrong time. God make no mistakes. Okay? They felt like you was trying to challenge them. They tried to compete with you as a mother. They overworked you. You gotta forgive them, folks, man. Forgive them. You know? Honestly, at one point in time, growing up, I, I felt a little unwanted. I did. I don't hold it against her. You know? She wanted to chase a dream. Look at me now. I'm doing the same thing. And sometimes you just want to apologize to your parent for slowing their life down, but is it your fault? Really? You know? So, so um, you got to forgive them, man. You got to. And so that's the only way you're going to be able to move on. You might have felt like they broke up your family. You might have felt like they broke up the family. You might have felt like, you know, because they were selfish. You know, I even heard situations, different cases where, you know, some some people parents will get so jealous of 
they child, they'll reach out to they to they to they mate. They'll reach out to the baby daddy, the baby mama. They'll look all at their wife, but they will do a whole lot because they so jealous, you know? And the whole time, the adult child don't see that because they just trying to bond with their parent. I'm sorry, y'all. But the whole time, uh, they was, let me get up out of here. Um, the whole time they was feeling like they were missing something. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't hold these people accountable. These folks are broken. These folks were broken. You know what I'm saying? And you got some you got some situations where a parent will say that you jealous of them. You never was jealous. You you looked up to them. You looked up to them. You know, they raise you to say, I don't want you to be just like me. But it made you question a little bit. Why would you say that? You know? But of course, as a parent, you don't want your kids to be just like you. But you don't want to be abusive to your kids either. You know what I'm saying? Emotionally. That's that's the worst type of abuse. You know? Slapping the kid down physically is nothing compared to what they can do to you mentally and emotionally because you gotta live with that forever you know what i'm saying it's like you gotta look at the difference between what's considered healthy and what's considered not healthy you know and you got parents that will say so much to the child that they'll start resenting the father vice versa you got situations where a father would try to get a child to resent their mother. You tearing the family apart like that. Real talk. You got even cases where, you know, they would do like some type of oblivious type of it. They do that oblivious stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where they don't want to tell you nothing about your parents. Your father might have been asking about you. Your mother might have been asking about you. But you've been with the opposite parent. And your parent been doing everything they can to say they don't remember nothing about that other parent. And eventually, they'll hold on to it. You feel me? They'll start forgetting about their parent because there was no trace. There's no memories, no nothing. Because that parent that you stay with or live with resented the fact that they was pregnant with you for so long that they don't even want to remember that night. They don't want to remember that person and they don't want you to remember either because they in, they in hopes that you'll never become them because they felt like that person stopped their life, held their life up. But they didn't realize they were destroying a family dynamic. Now you have to walk around not even knowing yourself. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. But um, I'm going to break the ice, though. I'm going to break the ice. In a heavy way, in a major way. Starting with myself. I'm not mad at my mother because I love her. If it wasn't for her... I, what womb would I would have came through? What portal would I would have came through? So I appreciate her. I love her. No matter what, I will always love you. I will always love you. You will always be my queen. My daddy, Joseph, I love you. I don't, I don't regret a day that I ever came down here to take care of you. I love you. Do we agree with everything all the time? No. But I love you. I appreciate you. Because you have shown me strength. You have shown me structure. you show shown me how to be tough. You have. You taught me how to be strategic. I appreciate you for that. Taught me how to prepare myself for 
anything. I love you for that. The family welcomes me all these years. I love you for that. I have no resentment against anybody. None. To my father, I love you. Joseph, you my king, but you also a soldier. You're a sergeant. I respect you. My father, Randy, I respect you too, Chief Petty. Without you, I wouldn't be here. I don't care about the past. I don't care about none of that. I'm not mad at nobody. Why? I wasn't there. I'm not mad at you. I will never be mad at you. Have I been frustrated? Yeah, because I was confused. I'm not confused anymore. You a king in my eyes too. Because whatever y'all had going on in the past had nothing to do with me. Never did. I love you. Okay? I don't care what it was. One day I would love to meet my sister. I love her too. I wouldn't even mind meeting the rest of the family. I have a beautiful son. If I wasn't here, my son wouldn't be here. People say what they want. But you are definitely a blessing in disguise. No matter what people say about you, I love you. Okay? I'm nothing against you. I forgive everybody in the situation. My mother, my father, my daddy, anybody involved. I don't I don't care about none of that. I have a son myself. I'm not even mad at his father. Because guess what? It takes two to tangle. He's here. My son is a blessing to me. I love my son. My son calls me his queen. Have it surprised me, yes, because I was really <laughs> thinking he was gonna say cherry. So I don't know, you know, where he got it from. I don't know, but he, mommy, my queen. That's what he says. I sacrificed a lot. This right here, that's my baby. I'm gonna continue sacrificing a lot for him. No matter what. Because that's what mothers do. I'm sorry, mosquito, y'all. I wasn't finna let that one fly. Literally. For real. I'm not gonna resent my son because me and the father fell out. I'm not doing that. See, I'm the narrator of my story. And guess what? I don't got nothing to do with the past. That's not the story of my life. I don't hate my father. I don't hate my daddy. I don't hate my mother. What they had going on has nothing to do with me. I don't hate nobody. Love everybody. I forgive everybody. Now it's my turn. It's my turn now. I forget my childhood all the way up to my adulthood. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go, baby. And I feel damn good. You feel me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Mm -hmm. No evil eye over here, baby. No ill intentions over here. It's all love. I love my brothers. I love everybody. My aunties, everybody. I love everybody. What can you say? I love them. I love them. I love myself. I can't say I, 
I love these people and I love myself. I love myself so much that I love y'all unconditionally. That's how I'm gonna break the chain. Y'all stay blessed, y'all stay healthy, y'all stay humble, but most of all, 